Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Andrew Huang. Andrew Huang? Massive narcissist. Sorry, I'm just excited. It's a big day for me. Uh, this is the first music hardware that I'm dropping. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff in the works, but this is the first one that happens to be ready. This is Ghost. Ghost is available now at most places where you would buy synth things. There is a silver panel version. There is a black and gold panel version. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. So Ghost was a collaboration with Endorphins. We started talking a long time ago about things we could do together and uh, there was a lot of overlap in our ideas. We actually have a second module already on the way, but Ghost is here. This is a super compact multi-effects module in Eurorack format. I think we came up with something really easy to get to know, really immediate to use. It's just very fun and playable. Let me demo it for you. So Ghost has multiple filter types, multiple distortion types, a delay, a reverb, both of those can be frozen. Uh, it's got a compressor and uh, it's got a sidechain ducking envelope built in. And then there are all kinds of utilitarian features like there's a pre-effects VCA, a post-effects VCA. You can take the sidechain envelope out to use it anywhere in your system where you might need an envelope. And one of the main things about it is this routing button. So every time you tap it, it changes between three different effect orders. So it just instantly switches the order of the effects. So that's really handy and fast for experimenting with sound. You don't have to re patch anything. Um, it's probably even faster than changing the order of effects in software where you'd have to like drag and drop plugins. It's just one button and you get to try out a new effect chain order. So that's sort of the gist. Let me show you some more details um, with some sound examples. So here is ground control triggering chance to just generate a random voltage which is being quantized by the Bard Quartet to give a uh, nice pretty never repeating melody for the 2HP bell. That's going through Ghost. Uh, by the way, Ghost is a fully stereo signal path, uh, but here I'm just going mono in and stereo out. So the very first thing um, is you have a tone control. You can roll off a little bit of the highs or going the other way, a little bit of the lows. Now, a lot of the parameters on Ghost have a secondary function, and this helped us pack a lot more into the module. Um, I think it's still really easy to navigate. Everything is labeled, and a secondary function is accessed by just holding down the routing button and turning a knob. So in this case, the secondary function of the tone knob is gain. You just get input gain. Noon is a unity. If you turn it all the way down, it's also unity, so you can just quickly put it there and you know that you're not having to worry about any volume changes if you don't want, but then it goes down to zero. You can get it back up to unity and then you can start boosting. And it'll go high enough that it'll get a little bit of a drive on it, which uh, is, is pretty nice and you can use it to further push the distortion effect. So let's hear the distortion. Might not normally put distortion on a bell, but uh, here we go. I'll use it on a bass line later because that sounds really awesome. But um, just so that you know, there's also another uh, type of distortion which you can access on the output volume knob. The final quarter turn of the knob is a drive effect. So if I just crank this up. This is a different flavor of distortion. It's a bit more kind of crispy high end. Whereas this one, I would say, warms the mids more. All right, next up, I'll show you the filter. So uh, this is my favorite way to have a filter set up when you sweep counterclockwise, it's low pass. And as you go clockwise, it's high pass. With some resonance in there, you can hear it better. Now this button down here switches it to a bandpass filter. Or routing in that button switches it to a comb filter. Next we have the delay. So I'll just turn this up, which is the dry wet blend of the delay. And then there is the feedback here. Feedback has a secondary parameter, which is tone. So we can take out some of the highs. Or we can take out some of the lows. 
or keep it at noon for uh, no tonal change. And then of course uh, there is a time knob which you can change it and get this kind of like tapey warbly stuff going on. It's also got a tap tempo. Or you can clock it. Then um, the time will snap to these different divisions of your tempo. And then we have a reverb, and uh, this is the dry wet here. And this is the uh, length of the decay. The secondary parameter of the tail, the decay knob, is pre-delay. So it can be pretty much instant or have a little bit of a onset time. Now I've got this going into the compressor. It's just a one knob compressor, so here's the dry signal. It goes through different ratios and different tuned in attack and release times. Nice squash on whatever you're putting through it. Super easy, just uh, clockwise is more compressed. Now let's start combining some of these effects. I'll turn up the delay and the reverb. We'll get a bit of distortion in there. And play with this filter. So right now the effect order is distortion filter effect. So uh, the filter is kind of closing down on that distortion sound and then uh, that signal is getting delayed. So even when the filter goes to silence, you still hear uh, that filter move kind of ring out. Now if I press this routing button, the order is now filter, spatial effects, distortion. And by the way, there's a legend right on the panel that shows you what the effect order is based on the brightness of the routing LED. So same thing, the filter move gets delayed, but then that signal gets distorted. So if I crank this distortion... The delay tails and the reverb tails are getting distorted. And then if we hit routing again, that's the third effect chain order, and this goes spatial effects, distortion, filter. So now, the filter kills everything. Let's look at another example. So I've got ground control sequencing this uh, basic triangle wave on Operat to give us this little bass line kind of thing. Let's use the rhythm it's giving us to trigger an envelope, and we can just pop this to the pre-VCA. So we're enveloping the sound before it goes to the effects, but we also have the post-VCA here if you want to modulate the volume of everything after the effects. So whether you want to do one or the other or both, you still don't have to use up another VCA in your system. It's actually saving you twice as many VCAs since these are both controlling a stereo signal. So we can turn up the input gain. It warms it up a bit. I'll bring that back to Unity. Now we could turn up the distortion effect. Another kind of distortion. If I turn up the gain into that distortion, it just drives it even harder. But also, there's this drive parameter at the top of the uh, output volume knob, this final quarter turn where it's marked darker there. That gives a bit more high-end sizzle. And you can combine these in any amount. So 
So that's a lot of sound shaving possibilities, but also depending on whether you have the filter before or after the distortion, it can be really cool. So here's filter after distortion. Just cleanly sweeps the whole signal. But if we put the filter before the distortion, it just drives it in a whole other way. Play with this envelope time too. We're gonna trigger a couple drums here. Gonna take the same trigger that's doing the four on the floor kick to the sidechain input. Now I can set the time of the sidechain envelope. And like I mentioned earlier, the sidechain envelope is also available here. You can just take it to use it for anything else in your system. Maybe we'll self-patch Ghost. I'll put it into uh, the filter. Maybe invert it. So Ghost is a techno monster. Check this out. It's this one, by the way. So first of all, here's what we're gonna put into it. I'm just gonna enter a completely random sequence. Uh, it's not even in a scale or anything, just the classic modular beep boops. So that is the only thing going through Ghost, but I am gonna add a kick drum on top of it. Um, the kick is not going through Ghost, here we go. And I'm gonna take the kick drum trigger to trigger the sidechain as well. And we'll uh, turn up the sidechain amount. It's pretty good there. Now, uh, here, let's distort this voice a bit. So we can already kind of do the classic, you know, acidy type stuff that I was doing before, but uh, I want to take it in a totally different direction. We're going to up the reverb a bunch. And then we don't even want to hear the original line, really. Like, I might go fully wet on the reverb. And then you can freeze the reverb. This just gives you those kinds of atmospheric backgrounds for this kind of music. You know, you don't want just full-on white noise, but there's something a little bit noisy and something a little bit tonal here. And then if I bring in the delay to just change up what's going into the reverb, it can be kind of nice, especially as you change the delay time. It injects these higher frequency little moments. Because what's happening there is uh, <laughs> these uh, little pitch shift artifacts from changing the delay time happen. Oh, that's gnarly. Yeah, like, this is so dynamic for, uh, you know, some background whooshes. Just 
as a reminder. Let's take it back to where we came from. All of that from these random bleep bloops. That's also why the name is Ghost, because it's really easy to create these whooshing, howling, rumbling sounds. I think that came from Andreas at Endorphins, uh, but I just think it's a cool name. So that's Ghost. It's uh, really great on individual voices or you could use it as master processing for a patch. I often also like to mix a bunch of my non-drum elements into it and then uh, you know I have all of those effects that can happen on all of that but it's also great to kind of glue things together with the compression or uh, maybe even a little bit of the distortion and then uh, you can take your kick trigger, send it to the sidechain input and uh, sidechain all of that at once. It was definitely designed with smaller systems in mind if you want a a lot of effects and some utilities in a small space. I think you'll find it really handy. Uh, obviously, if you like how it sounds, you can put it in any size system, but I would guess that uh, with a bigger system, bigger budget, you might want a more dedicated reverb or compressor. Just trying to be real with you, I think our reverb and compressor are super solid, but they do have fewer parameters to tweak than if you had dedicated reverb or compressor modules. We've got this one knob compressor where we fine tuned the attack, release, ratio, and makeup gain throughout its range um, and then on the reverb you only have three parameters you have the dry wet the uh, decay and the pre-delay so I'd say reducing the reverb and compression parameters was the biggest sacrifice we made to keep ghost compact but uh, I think the distortion options are killer uh, there's so many sound shaping possibilities there especially as you start to involve the tone knob or the filter um, the filter is fully featured you've got low to high pass there's a band pass option there's a comb filter option and you've got voltage control over the frequency and the resonance. Pretty much all the things you want in a filter. And I think the delay is awesome too. It's super simple to use, but still gives you a lot of options. Dry, wet, delay time, feedback, tone. Uh, there's three different stereo modes you can choose from. And then also it can be clocked or unclocked. Uh, and you can turn it into a car plus strong oscillator that tracks pitch. So um, 
That's a lot of delay goodness. So just trying to be as straight up as possible with you about what kind of setup Ghost is aimed at and uh, where it shines and what its limitations are. Um, if it's right for you, of course, I would love for you to get it. Um, if it's not right for you, I definitely don't want you to go drop a bunch of money on it. I know people in my position can get a reputation for just shilling stuff. And um, I hope you'll believe me when I say I'm not here to try and sell as much stuff as possible. I got a bunch of cool stuff I want to make. Hopefully some other people think it's cool and it makes those people happy. If that sounds like you and Ghost, uh, there are links in the description for it, obviously. And uh, thanks so much for being on this fun journey with me. I'm so excited about the music I've got coming up, the videos I've got coming up, and the other music hardware I've got coming up. Stay tuned. I'll see you soon. I am going to scratch my lens one of these days, for sure, on a module. So Andrew Huang. All right. Bye.